Hello and welcome to the San Jose State football press conference for week two. San Jose State coming off of a 24 to nothing win over Sacramento State and they're taking an eight game winning streak into the Stanford game this weekend that spans to last year. Spartans are also be playing in the sixth time in the Bill Walsh legacy game against the Stanford Cardinal. Game time is at eight o'clock. Coverage will begin on the flagship station 1590 KLIV at 7.30 with the pregame show. Also a couple other things to pass along. San Jose State Coaches Show tapes this week and uh, that will be at the Elks Lodge at 444 Alma Street in San Jose. Tapes at 5 to 6 p.m. and it will also be re-aired on KLIV at 8 o'clock. And we're debuting a brand new show. The Spartan Football Weekly will air on Comcast Channel 104, Comcast Hometown, later this week on Thursday. And you can also get that on YouTube the day after if you're not a Comcast subscriber. Let's bring in the head coach, Ron Carragher. Thank you, Justin. Uh, I'd like to begin and, and thank our student body. Uh, we had tremendous support uh, at our last, our, our last home game, our first game kickoff of the season. And just uh, the turnout was superb and just something we want to build off, creating an atmosphere of great energy and spirit and enthusiasm uh, for Spartan athletics. So much appreciated to our students. And I, I say that because uh, we're going to need you. We're going to need you this week on the road. We're going to need you throughout the remainder of the season, and uh, just appreciate that. Uh, shifting gears to uh, the game this week, um, to me, this is really exciting uh, to be part of this, the Bill Walsh legacy game. Uh, Coach Walsh had such a profound impact on me, uh, being in the coaching profession offensively, uh, his uh, game plans, his strategies, his schemes, and uh, you know, Spartan alum Bill Walsh. We're so proud of of what he's brought uh, to the coaching profession. And I also know uh, up the freeway, Coach Walsh had a profound impact at Stanford University as well. So, thus the Bill Walsh legacy game. There's also a number of other coaches, Hall of Fame type coaches, who've been involved in this series. Dick Vermeil who uh, played here and also uh, was a, uh, a grad assistant or a young freshman coach at Stanford. Uh, you could go back and you could find the names Pop Warner, Fielding Yost, Terry Shea, uh, John Ralston, Jack Elway, just Hall of Fame coaches that uh, coach at the highest level, done great jobs, and they're coaching in this game, and it, it really fires me up and excites me to uh, uh, be a part of this. Um, Excited, playing a, uh, a team uh, defending Pac-12 champion, uh, top five ranking in the country, three BCS bowl games. Uh, they are as good as advertised. Uh, Top-notch program. Uh, they're big, they're athletic, they're strong. Uh, that's really their trademark, uh, where they've really shifted their program. What looked like maybe six years ago in Ivy League football program has really transformed into what looks like a, an SEC football team. In fact, they're more reminiscent of an SEC team than they are a Pac-12 team. When you look at the depth, the athleticism in the trenches uh, that you see, and, and that's a compliment. Um, they've done a great job evaluating personnel, um, bringing those guys into the program. Um, I think they have a football team that's really um, stockpiled with future NFL players. Um, with the personnel that, that they have. And, and hey, we love that. Our culture here is embrace challenge, embrace opportunities. We see challenges as opportunities to grow uh, and develop. Uh, we have a saying in our room, and it comes from uh, a biblical saying, iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. We want to play against the best. And we are representing the Mountain West uh, this Saturday night, and we're playing against the best team from the uh, Pacific 12 Conference, and our guys embrace that. They're looking forward to it. Um, like I said, big, strong football team. They're Goliath. They're a team that, that just uh, will likes to play in a physical manner. They like to physically push, uh, uh, create movement up front and at the line of scrimmage. And uh, defensively, they're how you would, uh, how you would uh, draft the defense, six foot six guys on the ends. Uh, athletic inside, linebackers that can run the field. So we're excited. We definitely have our work cut out of what we need to do. We know what we need to do, 
and uh, definitely then follow that up and take care of business in Palo Alto on Saturday night. I'll open it up to questions. You know, at least for now, this is the last scheduled game in this series. Uh, and what do you think about uh, the potential of this series ending? And, you know, does, does that kind of put some extra emphasis to try to close out at least this era of the series with a win? Well, it's disappointing the series should end. This is a game that should be played on a home-and-home -home basis. Uh, we go up there, they come here. Every other year, we go back and forth, and that's how it should be. We're, uh, there, there's no levels in, in BCS football. And uh, we will, would be glad to host Stanford University every other year, just like we'd be glad to go up there every other year. And those are the terms, and we'd be glad to do it. Yes. How are you uh, getting your young defense uh, ready for Stanford's power run? Well, I'll tell you, you, you have physical week of practice uh, because those guys come off the ball. They're athletic. I, I think their front five linemen could be tight ends in other programs. They're that athletic. They skip pole. They trap. Uh, they uh, do a good job in their pass protection. So our guys need to, to play with good leverage, play with good base. Uh, you play high in this game, you get driven back. Uh, you've got to play with, with good pad level, uh, good base, good leverage, so that that doesn't happen. But it's a, it's a physical week of practice in preparation for a physical game on Saturday night. So uh, you, you mentioned uh, Bill Walsh, and you did have a chance, I think, to coach against him at one point, didn't you? I did. I was a grad assistant when uh, Coach Walsh was at Stanford. But uh, on, uh, a fun story is uh, when, uh, when Bill Walsh retired, and he was good friends with Terry Donahue, they used to play tennis on the side. And Coach Walsh uh, came down one afternoon playing tennis with Terry Donahue. Coach Donahue called me in and said, hey, Ronnie, can you, you mind giving Coach Walsh a ride back to uh, his hotel? And I jumped at the opportunity quickly before realizing I hope our 10-year-old Toyota Corolla is clean, uh, to taking Coach Walsh, uh, the genius, the guru, back to his hotel room. But sure enough, I had a chance to take Coach Walsh back to his hotel and got to quiz him, favorite goal line route, um, different uh, situations uh, as, a, as, a, as a 49er fan growing up. So I'll always honor and, and remember uh, uh, that moment as a, as a fun time uh, that I got to meet uh, Coach Bill Walsh. As, as you watch film from the Sac State game, uh, you know, like you said, the passing game seemed like it was just a tick off. You know, anything that jumped out at you that, that may have led to that, or was it just a little first game stuff? You know, we uh, we like to take our shots, and, and I think when you take your shots downfield, uh, the percentages go down. And uh, I really do want to do that: stretch the field vertically and horizontally. And sometimes when you do that, uh, and, and don't live in the short controlled passing game, but uh, chucking it down the field sometimes those percentages go down so really the other night went very well for us and and uh, it was a good first step for our, our, our season uh, very positive very upbeat about it and just uh, like we always do look to continue to to improve each and every week uh, throughout the season uh, how important is it to uh, you know at least win the game or at least have a strong showing just because it, you know in the Bay Area it's St uh, Stanford Cal Stanford Cal uh, you know San Jose State's going for the ninth win in a row as well so how important is it to make a statement? Oh, absolutely. We want to continue uh, our success and and uh, take care of business. But really, I think our players are properly honed in. One game, one play at a time, is is what all we worry about, not the scoreboard. And when you look at the, you look up at the scoreboard after 60 minutes, uh, you, you you definitely want to see you've come out on top. But the focus is not on the outcome. We are a process oriented, a process focused football team, one play at a time, and and then. Uh, you know, if you do those things, uh, Coach John Wooden, a, a wise coach, once said, if you take care of the process, the desired end results usually come. And we're going to be a process-focused, uh, process-oriented team uh, on Saturday. I know that uh, Falls obviously had a great year last year. But, but what have you seen in, in his development since then? I mean, uh, he looks even pretty well, good. Well, David Fales is uh, just uh, – he, he's a young man that embraces challenges and – and knows that challenges are opportunities to grow. And so we have, uh, we have thrown some different schemes his way that uh, we've seen uh, succeed over the long haul and, and will be needed down the road when we, as we continue to play teams uh, uh, in, our, in our schedule. And so I've just, I love David's attitude. I love it. He's, he embraces challenges, embraces changes, uh, knows that sometimes um, we get out of our comfort zone when changes come 
and, but David embraces that. And uh, that's when you grow the most in life, when you get out of your comfort zone. And I just applaud David for his attitude and his leadership, and, uh, it, which is evident as being selected as a team captain by his, by his peers. And could you have seen what uh, Jason Simpson did last week? Is oh, real impressive. Jason uh, started things off. This, he had a good spring. But I'll tell you, this fall, he really took off and had an outstanding fall camp. So the other night was not surprising to me. Uh, Jason ran the ball well. He's a physical back. He can pass protect. And it was just so nice to see. I think I mentioned in the conference after the game, it's so nice to see a fifth-year senior to be able to really have a, a great night like he did and we need more than that we need a great season out of Jason uh, and I'm, I'm confident that he'll be able to uh, to do that any update on Tyler I know he's got the boot on him yeah Tyler's really a day-to-day -day. We're, we're looking to see where he's at uh, he's a, a special athlete he can run he can catch he can do so many things he helps us in the return game but uh, really just just got to continue day-to-day -day and see where he's at How are you uh, planning to get more wide receivers and tight ends in the game? I know uh, last week it was mostly Chandler Jones and Grisby. Well, we, we did have, a, we did have a, a good rotation going last week. Uh, I think uh, I, 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 we had a – we play five, six wide receivers during the course of a game, um, three, four uh, tight ends during the course of a game, and it really dictates the situation that we're in that, that changes the rotation. But uh, I like it. I feel like our guys are in good shape, good fitness. They can hold up over the course of a game, and, uh, and uh, we will we'll carry on. And when you look at that beefy front seven that Stanford has, what is it going to take to keep fails up, right? Because it seems like that's going to be the biggest key for you guys uh, to, to yeah. get something going offensively. Yeah, they, they do a good job, uh, Jimmy. They, I mean, six foot six guys on the defensive ends with big wingspans. Uh, guys can knock down passes, yet they can, they can rush the passer, but they can play in space. Um, they do a good job uh, with those guys. They create push up front. Um, we just need to be firm. We need to be strong to, to give our quarterback time uh, and, and so that our offense can do what we do best. We need to really focus on what we do. Uh, it's about us. It's not about Stanford. It's about San Jose State Spartan football. And we need to do what we do. And, uh, and I, I feel confident uh, that we can and I feel good about where our program's at right now. Yeah, you mentioned that, that Stanford looks like an SEC team. Now, now you have, I, I know you've probably watched game films at least, that, that yeah. they have gone, you, as I say, it's gone up against the Nebraskas and the, and the Alabamas. Can you call anything from that? Can you, can you? Well, I'll tell you, and I, and I truly mean that as a compliment because I think peop, it's generally agreed the Southeastern Conference is, is probably the strongest in college football right now. And I say that because you see Stanford with the athletic linemen up front. I say that because you see Stanford run the power run game, the I formation, which you don't see uh, so much with spread offenses nowadays. Uh, I see it because I say it because of the athletic defensive linemen that they have, where they can line up and say, "We're comfortable playing in a cover two shell because our seven guys up front we think can handle your seven blockers. We don't necessarily have to bring a safety down." And you see that in the in in the elite programs on a national scale and Stanford has, has done a good job uh, you know I'll use I'll say recruiting but I probably could substitute drafting for recruiting when when you've hit three BCS bowl games in a year in a row uh, it's more of making the right choices because people people like what they see and they want to be a part of it and they've done a good job uh, even with all their success you still have to evaluate properly and they've done a good job evaluating I, I think even their coach said um, at their they're definitely too deep and he said we have some backups and third team guys that are that are too good not to have on the field so they have good depth they just replenish they replace um, those guys up front after graduation Yes. This game could be called the uh, University of San Diego alumni game. <laughs> I mean, there's uh, you, Dowtry, Shaw. Can you talk about how uh, a, s a school like University of San Diego uh, basically got all these coaches here and, and the program itself? Well, I'll tell you, and, and David and I, Shaw, David, Shaw, and I both have this in common. We, we filled some big shoes. Uh, you know, Jim is, uh, Jim is something else, and uh, he's a special coach, and uh, his whole personality is, is, is great stuff. 
And uh, I, I had the chance to follow him at USD and, and David at Stanford. I'm, sh I'm sure we could share some good stories together. But, uh, you know, that what's, what's exciting is we did have good coaches go through there. Uh, I, I hired close to 30-some coaches over six years, and most of those guys went on to the NFL or the Division I level. And, and really, Jim started it with hiring coaches that were out of work, basically, that still had, were getting paid by NFL teams. And I think David was one of those coaches that he brought him in in 2006, the year I got there. Uh, and it just seemed to work out. Guys that love coaching, don't want to uh, sit out, still getting paid by an NFL team. It was a great formula. Uh, come spend a season a fall in San Diego. And Jim started that, and I did some of that with some of the guys that I brought in. And it really, uh, it really took USD football to a high level. Uh, and we do have a lot of... Uh, a lot of common commonalities with uh, coaches who've coached at both both places, and so in a way, it's kind of like a reunion, getting together with their staff, the 49er staff, and uh, our staff here with the number of USD guys we had. You've got two, both your coordinators. Uh, you know, your D coordinator coached against Stanford the last about six years at Cal, and right. your offensive coordinator, you know, the last few years at Washington was part of a win over Stanford last year. How much does that help you to have a couple coordinators who are really experienced, you know, imme have immediate experience against Stanford? Helps us. We're, we're, we're very familiar with Stanford University uh, and uh, having coached against them, having recruited against uh, the players in their program from a personnel standpoint. And, uh, you know, I, I'm excited about it. I, sometimes you, you, you fight fire with water. Sometimes you fight fire with fire. And uh, I, I think we have a good plan. Uh, we know them. I think they're familiar with us as well. Uh, you know, you could reverse those, that statement, that question you asked with they know our coordinators, they know uh, our, our coaches and, and whatnot. Uh, so it's, it makes for an exciting game. I'm fired up Saturday, 8 o'clock. I'm looking forward to Spartan Nation being well represented there. And uh, this is why you, you coach the game. And it, while it's not a conference game, the Mountain West game, which is ultra important. It's huge. It's a big game. It's a statement. Uh, you know, San Jose State playing Stanford. And there's such great tradition in this game. And uh, as a young man going to those games when I was in high school and, and uh, having been recruited and gone to those football games, it, it's just fun to, to be a part of it. And I'm looking forward to it. I know that uh, it's more about San Jose State, but is there any kind of a motivating thing where you could say, hey, you know, Stanford's getting all this publicity. They got the big winning streak. Hey, we also won a bowl game here. We, we, you know, we had the winning record last year. Absolutely. And behind closed doors, I'll be glad to fully uh, uh, go into that with my football team. But uh, publicly, uh, I have all respect and, uh, you know, for what David and that group have done. They won the Pac-12 conference. You know, they've gone up, uh, they've gone up and beaten uh, some of the – the, the, the powers that be in the Pac-12 when they were way down as a program and they went toe-to-toe -to -toe and beat some of the bling universe football programs in that conference uh, on uh, as, as visiting opponents. And that just says a lot about their mental toughness and, and them as a football program. You know, Elite, it's only one game, but it looked like the, the short yardage running game on Thursday was much better than where it was last year. Mm -hmm. I know Nick Kaspar told me that it, it's they view that as it's an attitude thing. And it, how do you view that? Is that something that, that you see that, you know, it, with that short yardage when you're talking about just getting one key yard, uh, it, that's what you need is, is attitude? It is. Attitude is everything. Uh, attitude and effort. And you want to be a program that you can run the football short yardage. You can create movement. It's, it's will. It's, it's, it's our will versus the defensive line's will or vice versa as our defensive line against the will of the offense. And, and I felt like our team had it. That Spartan spirit was evident. Uh, guys were playing hard, playing physical, and uh, backed up against the wall. Our guys responded, and, and it says a lot. But yeah, absolutely, I, I, I believe in a balanced approach. Uh, all the while being a former quarterback, I love throwing the ball, but, but I do know the importance of, of an effective running game. Uh, you, you create a, a physical uh, aspect to your game. You, you, you create a physical uh, element to your offense, uh, and, and it's very important. You know, I actually had another question, but you reminded me of something else. Yeah. On, uh, you know, running, running and, and passing on the quarterbacks love to just take over, but mm -hmm. running the game itself, I mean, that's something that, that can really be key for a quarterback, even if it's just an all-running team. 
Well, are you allu alluding to the quarterback run? Or no, no. Mm, oh, oh. Yes, oh, managing the game, managing. so important. The guy under center really, and I feel this with David, uh, and I'm confident with, uh, with our other quarterbacks coming along, but uh, uh, David is an extension of the coaching staff on the field, and that's what effective quarterbacks do. They get you out of um, plays that are uphill plays and get you into downhill plays, if you will, uh, for a term. And uh, I, I like that, and I like him keeping calm, collective during those moments where we do need to change what's been called. Absolutely. I sometimes uh, I want to go for it. I want to I play to win the game and uh, not play not to lose the game. And I'm not saying I'm going to do that every time we're in that situation. Uh, but I coach off my gut feeling. I coach off instinct. And sometimes if I feel it's the right thing to do, even though even though protocol or, or uh, uh, consensus doesn't agree with it, I, I just think on doing it and going for it. And, and that was the one the other night. And, and, and we all know the ramifications if you don't make it. Um, but let's focus on the, what, what happened. We ended up making it, and it ended up being a scoring drive. We got a touchdown out of that, that drive, and I just felt like um, sometimes we need to do it. Sometimes I want the team to know I believe in them, and sometimes we're going to go for it. Thank you. Okay, once again, San Jose State takes on Stanford this Saturday at 8 o'clock uh, kickoff, and our coverage on the flagship station, 1590 AM KLIV, will begin at 7.30. Game can also be seen on the Pac-12 network. The coaches' show will tape from 5 to 6 at 444 West Alma Street. That's at the Elks Lodge, and then replayed at, again on 1590 KLIV that night at 8 p.m. And finally, the new show, the 30-minute Spartan Football Weekly, will air this week, Channel 104, on Thursday at 7 o'clock for you Comcast subscribers also be available the Friday following in the morning on YouTube. Our next press conference will be Saturday or uh, Monday, September 9th. Thanks for stopping by.